Bills and Cowboys, those are the two teams I would say that had the, the highest expectations of the mm-hmm. those who, who lost on divisional playoff weekend. Uh, what would be your advice for either one of those teams um, or for both of those yeah. teams hitting the offseason and, and based on what we just saw and their viability to, to get back and, and, and get to where they want to go, where they're, everybody's expecting yeah. to get there? What do you got for me on that, yeah. Lewis? Yeah, we'll, we'll start with the one that just lost, you know, lost most recently, being Dallas. Dallas needs more weapons for Dak, period. They need, a, they need another – they need more speed. You know, we don't know how Tony Paul is going to come back, you know, what that, what that leg's going to be like. Zeke is done. All they got is CD. They got to get more juice. They need more juice in the backfield, somebody who's healthy, who's got speed. They need more juice on the outside to go with CD. That's as simple as that. I think the offensive line's a work in progress. They're going to be okay there. Dak has to do a deep dive on what the hell ha- happened with me this year as far as wh- how I was seeing the field, my timing with the wide receivers. Why was I making the decisions I was making? Why was I putting the ball in harm's way? He's got to do a deep dive with himself, with Mike McCarthy. He needs to get with all the coaches and just be like, you know, let's figure this out. Defensively, that you need another corner to match up with, to go with Trayvon. Continue to get more speed, you know, get some more playmakers on, on the defense line at linebacker. Just fortify the rest of the defense. They, they'll be okay. They, I, think, I think they'll be all right, but they got to make sure – Dak's got to make sure he's got his process right, man, he, and he needs more help. Buffalo, mm. on the offensive side of the ball, man, Bu- Buffalo wants – they have to be able to control the line of scrimmage and control the game running the football. No doubt. Especially, if, you know, playing outside up there with somebody other than Josh Allen. Exactly. That's the, the, and, and not okay. to just jump in, you know, uh, not to just jump in, no, although I am right. doing that. It's just that but, – but, you know, all, all their numbers of – well, their red zone rushes are, are, are top of the league and their running game mm-hmm. is top of the league. But – that, that's because the quarterback is their best right. running back. And if right. you want to have Allen feel that he doesn't have to do too much and you mm-hmm. want him to do less and have that as his mindset, then give him somebody he can hand the ball to 20, 25 times. Try and win a game with Josh Allen where he throws it 20 to 25 times and see how no that question. works. Don't you think? No like, question. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we talked to them earlier in the year. Uh, we were up there for their week two game against Tennessee. Right. And I know that philosophically, that's who Sean wants to be, McDermott. Right. He said it. I mean, he, he said as much. Look, I, I, I want – like, they, they have been retooling their offensive line the past three years trying to find five guys who would come off the ball and really play dominant football. And earlier in the year, I mean, it was in the preseason. They, they played out in L.A. They played the Rams. That preseason, I can't remember so long ago, but I remember how they were they were running the football in that game, and I asked Sean about that, and he goes, he said, Lewis, that's who I want to be. I want to be able to do that when we want to do that. But as the season went along, they just kind of reverted to being, well, it's Josh and it's and it's um, and it's Stefan and it's Gabe Davis, and that's what that's just what we do. You know, we just we just throw it all over the yard, and that's isn't what they wanted to be philosophically in the beginning of the year. And they, they have to, they have to get that component defensively. Brandon Bean sat there at the table in the conference room and told us the number one thing last year, when we finished the year and we were um, coming back from Kansas city, he, we said, we have to get a closer who can put number 15 from the chiefs on the ground. Hmm. Because we don't have it. And when they lost Vaughn, mm. it all, from that point on, the pass rush disappeared. It disappeared. They, they didn't have a guy. I, I, I looked this up. They didn't have a guy over the past five weeks of this season who ranked in the top 40 of individual players in terms of pass rush win rate. They didn't have a guy in the top 40. Greg Rousseau was like 43rd amongst all pass rushers. You're, there's just no way, man. There's no way you're going to beat Joe Burrow like that. There's no way you're going to deal with Patrick like that. You're just not. And that's what they have to figure out. They got to get some people. They got to get some people, whether it's inside or outside guys. They got to get some people, and continue to find more playmakers in the secondary, which is where they were beat up this this year. They were just beat up there. So that's that's really what it is. 
establish the run game, be more physical on offense, and not rely on Josh so much on defense. You've got to get some horses, man. You've got to be like Philly. you got to be like Sam Pran. You've got to have a guy like Chris Jones. You've got to have a guy like Trey Hendrickson, who may be one of the best pass rushers in this playoff who nobody talks about. Hmm. No, Trey Hendrickson absolutely terrorized Orlando Brown last year in the playoffs. Again, when Kansas, when uh, Cincinnati went to Kansas City and beat him, he terrorized. Orlando couldn't block him. Watch that on Sunday too. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free.